Hey, what's up? Welcome back to our series about testing. We're building out some tooling to test our Rails application. In this episode, we're going to talk specifically about system tests, aka end-to-end -end tests, aka Capybara, Selenium, WebDriver, like all of these different tools that go together to make it so that you can sort of just do a full stack test where you're sort of browsing around in an automated fashion through your application and making assertions about what's happening to the database and to your application. Um, these can be combined really nicely with uh, model tests or just uh, sort of uh, unit tests in isolation with different things that you're, you've got on your back end uh, to round out your test suite. And so these are generally a little bit heavy handed and will take a little bit longer to run. So you don't want too many, I guess maybe would be the, the caution. Uh, but let's, yeah, let's just jump in and take a look. So the first thing we wanna do is go into our gem file here and in the test group, I want to add gem capybara, and then we'll say bundle install. This will set up uh, capybara to um, so that we can run some request specs. Then the next thing we want to do is say um, maybe we'll say Rails G R spec uh, system. We're going to call it a system test for um, maybe for the company's view. So if we take a look here on the company show page, we have a tool for refreshing the data. When we click this refresh data button, it should enqueue a couple of jobs. We've also got like a, a bunch of other data that's on this page that we could make assertions that it's actually showing up. So let's make the very first simple test be that we can at least load this page and read that the name of the company is showing on the page somewhere. So let's do that first and we'll just call this companies um, as our system test. All right, so we'll open up this companies spec and our very first test will say like, it loads the show page with the company name. And we'll say, we're gonna create a company and we're gonna say create, or company is equal to create company. And we can give it a specific name here, even name is like uh, test co dot. And then we can say, um, we want to visit the company, pay, the company path for that company. And we want to assert that uh, expect that the page dot has to have content test co dot. So very simple, very simple test, right? So we want to visit this path for this company that we just created. And then we're going to make assumptions or assertions about the page. So we've got our setup, we've got our exercise, and then we have our assertions again here at the bottom. So Let's run this test. All right, so when we're looking at this error here, we see expected to find the text test.co in form for companies insiders, blah, blah, blah. This is actually like the menu. Um, and then we see view notifications. Uh, and then down here we see email, password, remember me, sign up, forgot your password. So this is actually, returning the authentication page because that company's route requires you to be logged in. Now this can be a point where it gets kind of tricky depending on how you've implemented your authentication system because you might have to like set cookies or mess around with the session in order to, uh, to assert things about um, pages where you require authentication. In this case, I am using the, uh, the device gem, device. We have another episode on this channel about setting up device for authentication. And if you're using the device gem, this actually ends up being pretty simple because we can go to our, um, our Rails helper, I believe. Yeah, and at the bottom, in like the same way that we included those factory bot methods, we can also include some warden test helpers. So we're gonna say warden uh, test helpers. And that will make it so that we have a login as method that we can use uh, when we're logging in um, when we're logging in in tests. So let's go back to our test and we can, here we can say login as, and we can pass in the user or like create uh, user. And so that should create a brand new user using the user factory and then log them in. All right, so let's run this again. So we're gonna run our test. Okay, and we see here that we got, um, this uh, web mock, we got a web mock error. So we had web mock, we have med, <laughs> we installed web mock in an earlier episode. You can head back and check that out. And we see this unregistered request to api.stripe.com v1 prices. So it's actually trying to like look up some prices 
And uh, I'm recalling that what the way that we implement the, um, the billing solution for our application is that once you're authenticated, um, we are going to assert that you are a subscribed user. And so as part of that subscription, we're, we might redirect you to a page where you have to like then um, go and pay in order to become a subscribed customer. And so I think that we're getting redirected in this case because this the user factory by default um, users. So this user factory by default is just setting the email and password, but it's not doing anything about the status for being a subscribed user. So a subscribed user is sort of like a special case for a user. And so in this case, what I want to do is actually create like a sub factory of user or a nested factory that has a, that is subscribed. And so if I uh, create a new factory here for a subscribed user, uh, and then I can set their subscription status. So let's look at the user model real quick. And the way that we are telling if a user is subscribed is by checking the subscription status field and ensuring that it is active. So here, what we want to do is say that the subscription status is active and that should be returned for subscribed users. So now I can use this name in our test as the factory for creating the user that we want to log in as, and that will successfully set both its email password and also its subscription status. So let's go back over here and say, um, subscribed user. There's other ways that you can do this too. You can do it with, you can work with traits. So you can say like create user with a uh, subscription or something and that would create it with its uh, subscribed traits. But this is the way that I know how to do it. Um, okay, so now it's successfully loading that page. Let's go to the company show page, uh, comp show. And let's actually just remove the, the company name temporarily. Um, so that we can make sure that this is actually passing our test. So we're going all the way out to the template, to the view template for our company show page, remove the name so that we can rerun our test and we see that it is now at least showing us the right stuff. Um, so now we can put the company name back in there, run our test and it should pass. Okay, that's pretty cool. This application doesn't have very much CRUD. And so the only other thing that I can think of testing as part of companies is that uh, the when they click on that refresh data button, that it will actually refresh the data and fetch the data from, um, or like it'll at least enqueue the jobs that this refresh data method is calling. So let's go look at our controller again. Com company's controller here. So we have this update method, which is called when they click refresh data. And that is in queuing these two jobs. One is to fetch the prices for the company. That's one API endpoint on Alpha Vantage. The other is to fetch the overview, which is a separate API endpoint. And so when um, inside of our test here, we can say like it uh, enqueues jobs to um, refresh data. And in this case, again, we need to log in. And again, we need to create a company and we need to visit the same path. But now we're gonna do something different here and we're gonna say, um, after we visit the path, we also want to click on, and I keep the, so this is the button we wanna click on, refresh data, refresh data. And it's as simple as just passing in the string or text value for what's on the button. Um, you can say click button to be more specific about a button, but here I'm just saying click on because I don't have any other refresh data content on the page, so that should work. And then I want to assert that these two things were in queued. So like, um, I want to expect that uh, this job dot to have been in queued and also the company overview job. So those are the two things I want to assert. I'm actually just going to comment them out now and then run our test and it should fail because we are not actually enqueuing those. But our test, again, is gonna actually like go click around on the page. And so here we have our failure, expected it to enqueue exactly one jobs, but enqueued zero. So let's comment these back in, and then we can run this again. All right, now it's enqueuing our jobs. So now we have a test. These are like E to E tests. So you can do things like fill in forms, Again, this application is, does not have very much CRUD. It just has that one button, but you can go and like fill in form fields and um, yeah, you can upload files and do all kinds of fun stuff with Capybara, but hopefully this will get you started, especially if you're using devise, knowing this login as trick 
can come in handy. And again, we're mixing it with our factory bot setup that we did in a previous episode. So this, uh, this sort of rounds out all of the testing that I want to show with RSpec and how I generally will test all of my applications. Uh, in a follow-up, we might go through the process of how you set uh, GitHub Actions, set up GitHub Actions to run your RSpec tests. Um, but uh, yeah, until then, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.